every domestic object has the possibility of talking about another history or even a history of drama, history of violence. This has been like a, an ongoing inventory of, of items I've been collecting and then transposing as, as, as a drawn image that refer to various histories. And that's why you can see when you actually look at the objects closer that, the, that beneath that sort of domestic quality, there's that sort of pattern now of like, I don't know, decay of, of things being exhumed. While I was looking outside our window, dun sa apartment namin din, and I saw this building construction. I noticed this uh, loud noise, tong welding sparks na I thought about the expansion of the universe. It's the same concept, but it started with a bang and yeah, I explode yung enormous energy of light. Karamihan ng photos na na-take ko yung mga abandoned abandoned places subconsciously na kinunan ko lang dahil maganda. Title ng show is Condestruct. Combination of words uh, construct and destruct. I was trying to play with the idea of beginning and end. An art project that is devised to understand my life, understand and organize my life. It is like uh, researching life by living it. I'm framing it as my life as one big art project, seeing the larger picture and knowing where I am in the context of this larger community. The shortest route between A and B is not a straight line, but rather alleyways, uh, deserted areas, maybe demolished buildings or places that were once full of people but due to rapidly increasing modernization of the city, might be lost or abandoned. You see different routes or roads every time you commute. You would see these places that, to me, are beautiful. Whether I create a jewelry piece or a sculpture or a lamp, my source of inspiration is always nature in general. I am inspired by the patterns that you can find in nature, the laws of nature, the mysteries of nature. And for this show, I focus on the term sacred geometry because I found it very poetic and inspiring. the fictional ancient civilization out of its material past. Reverse engineered archaeology, or so I like to think. I was researching Philippine prehistory based on archaeology. And then I wanted to create my own civilization out of the objects they have left behind. This exhibition is about the complicated relationship of the Philippines to our colonial past. So both the colonization we underwent with the Spaniards and the Americans. Sometimes try to start by collecting materials, it's literally gathering ideas also and existing objects and even videos.
I thought a lot about the space. I think I really sort of planned the whole thing and put together the whole show based on kind of, I guess, almost having a little conversation with the idea of the space as well and knowing that it's a museum. I started to go back into that idea of an object, really, because I've always been working around objects and kind of look at my practice as somewhat like building objects with paint, sort of, and that's in a way how I guess how I see the, the practice of painting. I like to look at it as almost like a construction or building because I really see the practice of painting as a kind of very step by step because that's how I work. I find the idea of depicting um, transformation and change very interesting. I also like the idea of the temporary, uh, creating and destroying and construction as well and as well as destruction and everything that happens in between. I like the idea of transforming one material into another. In this case, wood into metal, a flat surface into a three-dimensional one, something uh, organic into something mechanical, and also a gallery space into a construction site. What are places that really made you to who you are, you know, growing up, etc.? Um, I went back to those specific locations and then any of the locals that I would run into, which would sometimes happen to be the relatives, would, would just be you know, doing their daily routine or whatever. Um, I'd ask them to wear outfits that the designers created. And yeah, and then I took a picture of them. I guess it's exciting to use photography as a mechanism of discussing these topics to the audience about memory and location. I mean, because if it was painting, it would be much more abstract, but here, this is really is kind of some sort of documentation of something that happened. My work revolves around sites of procreation and pollution, like domesticity in the ghetto, places like the slums. My inspiration is like kitsch and bad taste in fashion and the grotesque. How religion is used as a political force is what I sense I see in common here. But my unease with how the modern nation state aims to put itself in place of God is something I read into the logical extreme of movements like the Lapia Malaya, which integrate folk Christianity into a nationalism as religion framework. On the other hand, I am aware that purely secular motives may have guided the murder of Bustamante more than anything else. Religion was only an excuse. In the bigger picture, the question that begs to be asked is where does retroactive thinking posit a progressive elsewhere for contemporary Philippine art? Or does it just become armchair nostalgia or nostalgic kitsch or even sentimental kitsch? Should we always use history as a default justification of not wanting to push boundaries? Or is it simply intermingling the outmoded with what is contemporary? Complicated stitches too, though not exactly coterminous worlds at once, the imagery of our colonial past and the contemporary compulsion of art making, the hybridization of both resulting to startling, ironic, meaning-laden figurations that are reflective of a deeply private as well as an acutely social consciousness, that the artist felt no qualms in referencing and even subverting artworks once perceived as sacred objects, underscores the agency, which, through its symbolic articulations, can have a glimpse of itself. No image is spared. In the case of Sisa, she only has to lift the mirror to see herself. Nearly a hundred years of Philippine art is not an easy task. One always runs the peril of omissions. Stories oversimplified, continuums ossified, and watersheds overlooked. 
What, however, presents the Philippine contemporary from plunging down this dangerous slope can be described as something short of a curatorial coup. The exhibition design veers away from conjuring a grand definitive narrative of Philippine art history's greatest hits, and instead attempts to soberly scale both the past and the possible through a chronological and reflective survey of works. There are a lot of things that can be said about the method of indexing, especially how the works are put together. In trying to stay true with the topographical concept, one may ask why the arrangement did not start at the center to later branch outward, as how a world or piece of land would usually develop. Though these questions may be valid, they are only one of many possible configurations in presenting such an immense collection. But in reality, any concept won't do as much in alleviating the experience from any sharp turn from the influx and that the visual art can inflict on the senses. The temporary art is, after all, the sum of withstanding disciplines. Cacophonous, messy, crowded. These are terms that need to be considered with every curatorial pursuit. The process of selecting and collecting when it comes to curating contemporary art, however, is a curious and conflicting exercise in which selections are made from work that continues to be created. This is done despite traditions dating back to the 18th century, which designate the role of the museum as a showcase of art and artifacts that have stood the test of time. Thus, the overarching conflict. How can an institution traditionally devoted to displaying, narrating, and preserving of what was, or what has been, tell the story of what is and what can, or what should be? Contemporary art, once collected, must not only contain descriptive accounts of the past, but must bear normative prescriptions for the future.